TikTok at 5 o'clock sharp. Many Colorado restaurants will close their dining rooms. Tomorrow, that's going to be only to take out. Or I can put some tables outside. They have fought an uphill battle against COVID restrictions, and now some must deal with the new chain restaurant next door. If they want to go with it and like it, you know, what do you have to do? Others' plans to throw the rules out the window, setting up another showdown between state and local leaders. And with exactly one minute until new restrictions go into effect, we are focused on the defiance from Weld County, where commissioners and the sheriff say they will not make people follow the level red rules. In a letter to state leaders, Weld County commissioners say the county will not enforce the state's residents can have personal gatherings, will not enforce a rule requiring a reduction of attendees in places of worship, and will not enforce a rule demanding restaurants close their indoor dining areas. Now, we have reached out to Weld County commissioners for comment. No one has responded. Documents obtained by Denver 7 reveal the county has been dragging its feet, never responding to state requests for a COVID mitigation plan, even as cases spiked in early November. And now the number of Weld County residents with COVID is about seven times higher than the goal set by state leaders. Governor Polis said today there are only three ICU beds available in the entire county. And those comments came during a wide ranging talk with the governor this afternoon, a few hours before restrictions took effect. Number seven is Jason Grenauer joins us in the studio. Jason, uh, the governor again stressed no social gatherings. Shannon, that was his main point this afternoon. He admitted the government only has so much power to do things like limit indoor dining or limit gym capacity, but that this fight against the virus now comes down to individual responsibility to not get together with people outside of your household so that restrictions can eventually be lifted. The governor said today one in 49 people are contagious with the coronavirus in Colorado. So if you decide to have drinks with five friends, you have a 10% chance of becoming infected. He said that things that things that once were reasonably safe are no longer reasonably safe and that if people can take personal responsibility to not gather in groups that he believes some counties could turn the corner. Now is the time to be extra cautious. Uh, you know what you need to do. Uh, we simply need to do it better, uh, and it, it could make the difference of thousands of, of lives, maybe even your own, if you do the right thing. Now, the governor re-emphasized that a vaccine could make it to Colorado by sometime next month, but won't be widely available until well after that, which is why that personal responsibility piece, as he put it, is so important even under these new red restrictions. Shannon. Jason Grenauer. Thanks, Jason. All right, let's reset the dial for you. Ready? Adams, Arapaho, Boulder, Broomfield, Clear Creek, Denver, Douglas, and Jefferson counties, along with a handful of mountain counties, moved to the category red 5 p.m. So just now, Alamoso, Otero, Prowers, Pueblo, and Weld counties will move to that level red on Sunday. And for counties in red, personal gatherings are banned. No indoor dining at restaurants. Last call 8 p.m. Gems are 10% capacity. And if you are elderly, obese, or otherwise at risk, you are encouraged just to stay home. And as with any rule, there are exceptions. The Broncos will get to host 5,700 fans at Empower Field this Sunday, and it will be the last time fans are allowed at the stadium this season. Indoor dining will be allowed in Summit County for this weekend. Those restaurants will have to close Sunday night. There are also variances in place for some outdoor events like the Denver Zoo Lights or for weddings and funerals, which are already scheduled for this weekend. And across the country, cases are surging. The U.S. reported more than 184,000 cases of the virus yesterday. That is a new daily record. And breaking just within the hour, the president's son, Donald Trump Jr., the latest person in the Trump circle to get sick with the virus. But we are seeing some positive developments on the vaccine front. Tonight, the FDA's Vaccine Advisory Committee announced it will meet in about three weeks to discuss emergency clearance for Pfizer's vaccine. This one's proven 95% effective in trials. The FDA did not mention Moderna's vaccine since that company has not yet filed for emergency authorization. Of course, a vaccine cannot come soon enough. Tonight, there are more than 1,700 hospital beds in use by patients with COVID or COVID symptoms. And as we mentioned earlier, there are only three beds available in Weld County, none in Mesa County, and they have begun activating their surge protocols to deal with the virus. 5,700 new cases of the virus were reported today here in Colorado. And at the current pace, Colorado will break 200,000 total cases by Thanksgiving. And today, Denver Mayor Michael Hancock was one of the voices calling on people to look at the numbers and change behaviors now. If this virus continues to spread like it is right now, 
It won't just mean another stay-at-home order. It will mean more easily preventable loss of life. Mayor Hancock said the city is making it a point to help small businesses. Denver gave more than $10 million in relief funds to business owners today. And at a time when many small businesses are hurting, we watched hundreds of Coloradans light up to enjoy a burger at In-N-Out Burger. The chain just opened its first two drive through locations in Colorado today. And Denver 7's Russell Haythorn is live at the town center Aurora, where gridlock is the name of the day. Russell, where several mom and pop restaurants are also promising to keep working through restrictions. Yeah, and on a day when many mom and pops are forced to close to indoor dining yet again, these guys come along and people wait for hours just to get a burger. I mean, check it out. This is the line right now. It snakes all the way through the Aurora Town Center here. One guy just told us it took him four hours to get all the way through it. Never mind the fact that this is fast food, and as many have pointed out to us today, not exactly the healthiest option you can make, but in and out is finally here, making its debut in Colorado in the midst of a pandemic. Just a number one. They came, they sat, they waited. It's just a journey today. And whether it's all worth it or not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Three hours wasn't out of the, you know, unexpected, so definitely going to be worth the wait. Depends on who you ask. Uh, worth it? No, I don't even eat beef. Uh, yeah. I'm just here for her and my dad. In and outs arrival in Colorado comes at the most ill-timed or opportune moment, depending on your perspective. So let's go 360. And now that they finally brought it to our hometown, it's awesome. You certainly can't blame In and Out's fans for lining up. The vehicle line is three to four hours, and this line is only an hour. They said. I ordered about like five cheeseburgers and five animal style fries. Just around the corner at NGL Burgers, owner Jesus Polito is preparing to close to indoor dining yet again. Tomorrow, that's going to be only to take out or I can put some tables outside. After 16 years in business in Aurora, Polito, who's also from California, certainly has his fans too. The food speaks for itself. <laughs> I grew up in LA. There's charcoal burger places everywhere, like on the corners, mom and pop shops. And this is exactly the same way. And regulars like Juan Lopez say Polito's prices are right on the money. If you're going to let me pick for lunch, I'm going to come here. This is a better deal. It's a money worth over here. It's only like six bucks, man. Six, six something. Oh, five. Five. Oh, five, five. <laughs> five, five, eighty-five. The question is, what kind of dent will in and out coupled with another COVID shutdown put in Pulido's business and the business of other small mom and pops. <laughs> Pulido, for one, believes he will survive. You know, maybe that's going to be hurt me a little bit, but, you know, I have my own customers, you know. If they want to go with it and like it, you know, what do you have to do? To me, it's important to keep these guys going. Want the legs to go? They know me, so when I come here, you get that feel of, like, um, like family and community. Hi, Back at the new guy in town. This is my first time. They just keep coming and waiting. <laughs> Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. <laughs> President Trump spoke publicly this afternoon for the first time in a week, and he announced plans to lower prescription drug prices in a speech that only lasted 20 minutes. It also included several references to the election. Which I won, by the way, but, you know, we'll find that out. Uh, almost 74 million votes. Now, the president's claims are not stopping the work of election officials in several states. Within the hour, Georgia's secretary of state certified Joe Biden as the winner of that state's electoral votes. President Trump could theoretically ask for another recount, but it would be done by machines, not by hand. And two Wisconsin counties are hoping to have recounts finished by the middle of next week. The president's team paid $3 million for recounts in the two counties, which include Milwaukee and Madison. The president lost Wisconsin by 20,000 votes, and this recount would cover about 800,000 votes. President-elect Joe Biden, meanwhile, met with Democratic leaders on Capitol Hill today. He still does not have access to transition materials. And the woman who could give him access, General Services Administration Chief Emily Murphy, is supposed to explain why she's holding up the process. She's supposed to explain by Monday. And today, House Majority Leader Nancy Pelosi promised to step in if the holdup continues. Not a whole lot of moisture from this storm, but there are a couple more in the extended forecast. Worth the risk? Colorado's leaders are hammering the point about Thanksgiving gatherings. The safest thing to do is to not travel. Tonight, Denver 7 takes a 360 look at holiday tourism and whether those rules are actually keeping people from their plans. And a TSA agent is honored after losing his battle with COVID. 